Hey everyone, Joy Wen and Panna here. Today's video is on our one tick Turing machine that we built using command blocks. We'll go into what it does and how we made it and give two examples of specific Turing machines. Feel free to skip ahead to the actual machines, which we've time stamped in the description. So a Turing machine consists of a scanner and an infinite tape. The tape is a string of light gray concrete blocks. It's divided into squares that can have a symbol placed on them. In our design, the color of the block represents a symbol. Light gray corresponds to a blank square. Our design can support as many symbols as necessary for a given machine, which we'll show in a bit. Next is the scanner. In our design, it's this retextured slime mob here with a picture of Alan Turing in red. Right now it's red because it's in an off state. If we turn it on by renaming the slime to on, we can see the image of Alan changes to the spinning green texture. Side note, this animation was made using Optifine. The scanner can do a number of things. Move left or right, and it can write to or erase a symbol from a square. If we place a redstone block on either of these two yellow glazed terracotta blocks, the scanner moves left or right. If we look at the actual command inside of these, you can see we're basically just executing a command from the perspective of the scanner and teleporting by one block to the left or right. The second command block simply gets rid of the redstone block. Also, note that the command block executes only if the scanner is named on. Otherwise, it does nothing. And if we place a block on any of these lime glazed terracotta blocks, the scanner changes the block underneath it to a different color. This corresponds to the machine writing a symbol to a square. The one that changes the block to light gray concrete corresponds to the erase operation. Looking inside the command blocks, they are similar to the ones for the move action. Basically, we execute a command from the perspective of the entity named on, and if one exists, we change the block underneath it to a certain color. The second command block, again, just gets rid of the redstone block. Last, we mentioned that the tape is infinite. By that, we mean that it's potentially infinite, not actually infinite, in the same sense that a person can count to infinity by continually adding one. If we keep moving the scanner to the right, you can see a light gray block will keep appearing when there wasn't one. This is done using this repeating command block over here which basically says if there is an entity named on, execute a command from its perspective. And if there is air underneath the entity, place a light gray concrete block there. That's it for the mechanics of the Turing machine. It has a few simple operations, move left, move right, read, write, and erase. By itself though, what we've shown isn't a Turing machine, because it doesn't actually do anything. In order to have a Turing machine, we have to use these operations to perform some sort of algorithm, which we'll show next. Okay, so here's our first Turing machine. It's designed to alternate the digits zero and one indefinitely. We'll show it in action and then explain what's going on. It goes pretty fast, as you can see. What we didn't mention in the first part of our video is the idea of machine states, or what Turing called M configurations. Basically, in defining a machine, you create a table. Here's the table for this machine, which is actually taken directly from Turing's paper. The two columns on the left are the M config and the currently scanned symbol. Together, these make up the configuration. For each configuration, you get a corresponding behavior, which is both the operations to be performed and the next machine state. The operation P0 means print 0, R means move right, etc. Now if you look at this bottom layer here, you can see the signs each indicate a machine state, and the command blocks within them perform the operation specified by the table. The initial command blocks within a given state perform the read action. 
We're going to run it again. And keep in mind that a white square indicates a zero and a black square a one. The initial machine state is B for begin. Okay, in the last part of this video, we're gonna show a more complex algorithm. This Turing machine here prints the sequence 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. In other words, zeros alternate with an ever-increasing string of ones. You may have noticed in the last video that the zeros and ones were separated by a blank square. The two machines we're showing follow the conventions of Turing's paper. Part of that convention has numeric squares, the squares with the white and black, separated by a single block. These alternate blocks are used for non-numeric symbols and function as a scratch pad of sorts. While non-numeric squares can be overwritten, numeric ones cannot. This machine uses four symbols, black, white, cyan, and purple. If you look at this table, Cyan corresponds to the X and purple to the schwa, that upside down backwards E. We won't walk through the algorithm in detail, but essentially the Cyan blocks are tracking how many ones need to be added to the next sequence after the initial one is placed to make sure that it's one more than the previous sequence each time. Side note, the operation E means erase, or in our case, place a light gray square. And that's it. We'd love it if you clicked the like and subscribe. We'll be showing more complex Turing machines in the future. Thanks for watching.